dearest and most chaste and most tender of bokus. Depending on the fifth of Saturday, whether or not they deliver on that day, you will find the most ancient of pakaches. In it, you will find the ability to travel within time and space into the dimension of dead side. The most sacred of cartridges. You will find the shadow man. And I think it's pretty good. Um, it, it holds up aesthetically, I think. I think you'll enjoy it. A lot of N64 games don't really hold up, but I think you'll enjoy this one. So please, Boku, take a look at it if you have time. If you have time, there's, there's a lot going on. You have some reviews and... Ah, ha, 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 ha. Love and kisses. I, I mean, like, I don't... I don't really know how you were talking directly into my head. But I was, like, kind of in the middle of something... Important. But why not? Let's, let's do it, Matt. This game's not good though, Matt. It's not good. And also, it's a disc, not a cartridge, you idiot. Um, uh, mm, um, yeah, um, the, the music's, the music's really good though. Um, J Jaunty, uh, his, his voice acting, his, his dialogue is, is pretty on, is, uh, I jumped through the, the ground in like 20 minutes of playing. Look, I didn't, I didn't say it's super good or anything. So I, I just wanted to do a review with you, man. I don't, I got all this bullshit out here. Just look, how about you just play it for more than 20 minutes? Is that, is that all right? Just come on, man. Come on. I'm trusting you. Shadow Man is based on an old 1993 comic book character that had established lore for years under the imprint of Valiant Comics. But in the mid 90s, a claim yeah, that, that acclaim bought Valiant and relaunched Shadow Man under their own comic book label for reasons known only to them. This fate also befell Shadow Man's distant cousin. I am Turok. Yeah. Yeah, we we oh, we already knew knew that. The game feels like it already has an established lore, meaning you're just kind of thrown into its world with little context. You kind of get a sense of who these characters are and their origin and vague little snippets, but for the most part, it seems like you're supposed to know all this stuff already. Like maybe everyone should please buy Shadow Man by Acclaim Comics. Long story short, the Acclaim Shadow Man universe centers around the Mask of Shadows. Mama Netty, also known as Agneta, is an immortal voodoo priestess who creates the mask for the purpose of generally ruining people's lives. In this case, Michael Leroy. Who is Michael Leroy? Some man. I I suppose he's the Shadow Man. The first thing you notice about Shadow Man is the quality of its voice acting and its tone and atmosphere. Well, maybe a little rough by today's standards. Back in 1999, it was something to behold and to be here. The opening scene with Legion and Jack the Ripper is especially haunting. And yeah, this cutscene scared the shit out of me when I was a little kid. For we are many. Man, there's a ton of cutscenes in this game, especially for a game that's nearly fully voice acted in this era. In fact, the Steam listing for this game says to live the nightmare with over 40 immersive cutscenes and hours of in-game speech. I think the only nightmare is the low bitrate of the samples. Okay, so they're in this world, but where exactly? Mm. That's just uncalled for. You're directly insulting my childhood. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I'm really sorry. I, I didn't. I didn't mean... Mm. And as a child, I never expected this to happen whilst I was playing my Kitty N64 console made by and for babies. I hate this shit. Just a pawn in Nettie's master plan. I don't approve of this fucking language. Yeah, back then, fully voice acted swearing was some pretty fucking groundbreaking shit. I felt like I was doing something I wasn't allowed, like I was gonna look over my shoulder any second to see my dearest mother glaring at me. Not to mention the implied sex scene at the very beginning of this game. Or maybe they're just mutually cuddling. And brother, sometimes she really does move me. 
my parents wouldn't even let me play Donkey Kong 64 because they said that Chunky was one hell of a guy. Hitler's face exploding was okay though. Shadow Man was available on most consoles around the time of its release. The one I'm playing is the Dreamcast version, although I did try out a couple. Originally I was going to play the PC port as it's the intended version of the game. Levels are more fleshed out and generally longer. The audio isn't super bit crushed and well, the, the graphics are better. Plus the widescreen support is nice. Too bad whenever I opened my inventory it just crashed. And when given a choice between N64, PlayStation 1, and Dreamcast, I had to stick with my gut and play my old 60fps fling. Sega would be proud. Unfortunately, this version has an issue with cinematics and the pacing of dialogue and the subtitles, so I guess I can't win. The first thing you notice when you start playing Shadow Man is that it does a decent job of making you feel like something is off. This world is just weird looking, maybe it's the rudimentary 3D polygonal graphics, but you get this twisted sort of fantasy vibe the way these levels are just put together, and the color palette is just, it's just odd. That's nothing though, because things sure take a turn for the super fucked up when you come across this veritable army of fucking pit bulls holding vigil over this church. Are pets this religious in Louisiana? Yep. After talking with Nettie, who kind of serves as the guide of this world, she basically tells you that you need to collect copies of blood- I, I mean, dark- uh, sh demon- demon souls? Fuck it, just shoot these beehives with your ghost gun. Also, mind the platoon of rabid dogs trying to spread the good word on your way outside of my church. Uh, yeah, thanks, Shadow Man. <laughs> And that's it! Pretty much from there on out, you're on your own to navigate both Louisiana and Deadside, which is a whole other world that's basically hell or limbo or, or whatever. It's an interconnected nightmare landscape that just seems to go on and on. You need to collect these pissed off spirit souls when you find them, as they kind of fill the role of Mario 64 stars, as you need a certain amount of them to unlock later areas. And when you reach a new later area, however, you'll fucking know it, because Edlord Shadow Man will never miss a beat to regale you with this never-ending monologue that, that sounds like it's lifted straight out of a classic 80s Metallica song. This is the place I have not wanted to dream of, and the dream is now the place I partly lived through. Yeah. One thing Shadow Man doesn't tell you is that while he's always quick to sling his dick about about how badass he is, in actuality he fucking sucks, especially at the beginning. Enemies take so long to kill, and you're just stuck there pressing the button to this affair. Isn't this great? The ghost gun you have for some reason is so slow, and you're just stuck backing up and strafing around enemies like a dingus. And you can't even tell when you're being hit because the enemies, zombies, or whatever they are, just throw wimpy glass shards at you, and you're gonna die because there's no clear hit detection or indication that anything is happening. Well, you know, at, at least it gives you a system kind of similar to Z-targeting. Actually, you might not expect this at all, but Shadow Man is very similar to Zelda, or even a weird 3D Metroid-style affair, both in the combat and the exploration of the world. You're actually constantly on the hunt for equipment, weapons, and powers, which will give you access to other portions of the dead side landscape, and even after that, you can transfer your lord of dead stuff powers to the real world and find stuff you missed back in the bayou that you couldn't get access to before. That this game world is just, it's really massive. Yeah, it's fucking huge, and the PC version was supposed to have larger levels? I find myself getting lost in the first dead side area, and I can't even begin to imagine things bigger than this. At least some of the unlockables and equipment you find is pretty cool. Your first find is a skull that shoots fire using your dead powers. It felt kind of useless, but things got better over time until I eventually began doing this kind of shit. <laughs> The lore of this world feels super expansive though, as you get access to a journal in your inventory that has notes on what exactly you're doing. But even still, you're probably gonna get super lost. Thankfully, the teddy bear thing that you use to travel between worlds helps to consolidate some of that, but barely. Things come to a head when you eventually get access to this really hospitable and charming black cathedral of pain and suffering just beyond the Marrow Gates. This is kind of the main location you'll be visiting Shadow Man, where you gain most of your gear and take on most of the game's bosses, who all happen to be psycho killers called from all over the world and also all over time. These are generally just shoot bang affairs and that while each boss has really nice introductions and they attack in different ways. Shadow Man doesn't need to be a rocket scientist to beat them, unless he's, you know, one of those rocket scientists that figures things out by shooting guns a lot. 
You'll start to feel things escalate and get real the deeper you head into the cathedral. Levels start to become more morbid and dark, which is impressive honestly because I can't see shit. Motherfucker has to turn up his TV brightness just to be able to see platforms to make jumps. The levels change and get more dangerous because yes, I can't see a damn thing and I'm still required to make these precision jumps. There's a reason that jumping was never a main mechanic in the 3D Zelda games as it is put eagerly on display here. Shadow Man, no matter how badass he begins to get with his ghost shit, he's still a clunk asshole. At least you got more HP and weapons to blaze through it. These sound effects though. Oh, oh okay, calm, calm down, babe. Um, uh, one thing that really shines in this game though is the music. Oftentimes you don't know what you're listening to. Otherworldly wails, rusty machinery, chanting, voodoo drum beats, and the wonderful use of Moonlight Sonata. A hellish soundscape to match the visuals and the theme. And that's what Shadow Man really seems to nail, and even holds up some 15 years later, in that the presentation is fantastic for its time and really leaves an impression on you. This is some dark, heavy shit to lay on a kid back in the heyday of the N64 and the PlayStation, and I guess you could say it contributed to all the things wrong with me now that I am a large man. Shit. I did enjoy some of the presentation, but I'm just not super into the dark, hellish fantasy worlds. I like colors, tight gameplay, concise level design, Naoto. Shadow Man feels like a bit of a mess by comparison. I mean, yeah, the music is actually pretty decent with some gut-wrenching tones and generally heavy movements. It's eerie, but all of my attention's pulled away when tracks will all of a sudden just cut out when you're entering segments of levels. Like, not even a fade or anything, just zip! Oh no, where's the music? Is a jump scare coming? <gasps> oh my god, there it is, oh no! Yeah, but... They they did fix some of that stuff in the sequel. <laughs> Are you talking about Shadow Man's second coming for the PS2? You mean the game that acclaimed that it would be a good idea to promote by paying grieving families to allow them to advertise on their loved ones' tombstones? That's a thing that happened on our planet! <sighs> Most innocent and ignorant of Bokus. Such a shame you feel this way. Dude! Come on, dude, Shadow Man's a mess, and that's not my name anymore. I figured you were better than this. What, am I not allowed to have an opinion anymore? Come on, Matt, this is the USA. I don't know what Canada's about. Some more, some of the option. What, what are you doing? Are you throwing a telekinetic fit into my brain right now? Is that what you're doing? Yeah, real mature, dude. And onto your decaying mortal coil, I, Shadow Man, banish your soul, Boku no Eruption, to the sinewy blackness of death's afterbirth. Oh, like you have that kind of power? <laughs> you think you have that kind of power, Matt? You think you can blow me up? You think you have the power to banish me from this realm? You think you have that kind of power? <laughs> 